Michelle Mears as a uh, consultant uh, to the board, so we're very happy to have her. So for all the board members, she'll be helping us out along with uh, Tom Clark uh, throughout the year. If we can just briefly, sure. Richard, Sarah, our minute taker, you've met John, and Sue sitting next to you. All right. Uh, next on the agenda is the uh, continued review of the uh, Victoria Port Point subdivision uh, proposal. Um, Tom, I'm going to turn to you first and ask if you have any comments about the uh, revised documents that have been provided. Um, there are a couple of little things. On the open space, um, there's a difference of opinion as to what it should be labeled as opposed to just open space. I understand from the applicant's perspective, if it's just open space, uh, I mean, excuse me, from the town perspective, if it's open space, it's, it's a little ambiguous. From the applicant's perspective, if we say unbuildable, they won't be able to do anything like the gazebo for the homeowners association, etc. So I'm suggesting that we may want to, um, as opposed to not to be developed, we put not a building lot in parentheses underneath the open space on the plan. So. They won't be able to put a house on it, but they have to do a gazebo or recreation facilities or something. Okay, yeah, that, that was that was our concern. Is it was going to be you couldn't touch it, and, and they they want to do little things that make it more more conducive to a community feel. But, but certainly, we have to so that that would certainly take care of our concerns. So you're okay. Yeah. So we'll have that made. That change made. Oh, you'll make that change. I will. <laughs> and on sheet SP1, there was that comment. Um, yeah, Tom, would you mind sharing your... <laughs> We're not quite sure what it means. It's in the right hand. Um, the land development features houses, etc. shown on this plan are approximate and shown for planning purposes only. The plan is intended to show the feasibility and buildability of the project is not intended to restrict the development beyond what is depicted on the subdivision plan. What does that mean? It, it, ju it just means that, that 
the subdivision plan is what, what dictates. We're, we're trying to demonstrate that these lots are, are buildable. Yep. I mean, we've got a scenario that they are. But, but if somebody comes in and wants to build a different house, we're... we're is we're, it generic? And they could sell a little? Yeah, we're restricted to the setbacks and, yeah. and, and notes that are on the, on the subdivision plan. So I guess then we need to determine whether or not Plainware wants that removed or revised. Yeah, we tried to draw generic boxes, but if, if these were condos that had to be sited exactly in a certain spot, right. then this would be a site plan. But he no, showed buildable envelopes and then a sample. He took a 30 by 50 box and just showed, theoretically, it's going to have jugs and it's going to be maybe tilted a little bit more one way or another, but it would still meet all the rules and all the setbacks. He was just saying that these houses are examples and not meant to be specifically that shape in that exact location. Tom, can you tell me again what she and what note is? Yes, it's uh, SP1, and it's a numbered note on the right-hand side above the lot development design notes. There's, there's not a number. It's not numbered. Right. Okay. So what if, if we would say, if we would agree to the first paragraph, but then you guys get rid of the second paragraph? Because that one is really what... I mean, if we said it's proximate and shown for planning purposes only, in my mind, that would be, um, could be interpreted as, yes, we have the house here, but if it has to be a bigger house or a smaller house, or it has to be moved left or right, it still has to comply with the zoning regulations, subdivision regulations. But it's a single family house on a single family lot. Yep. We have no objection to that. We're just trying to make sure you know that this, again, I, it, I thought it protected everyone that they can't come back later and say, I want a variance because my house doesn't fit. And your, your right. fallback is, no, we've got a plan that shows you can fit a house on there, and we're not going to give you a variance. Yeah, so I, I or, think or, if you say the house's location, I mean, what you say here, shown our approximate and for planning purposes only. That, 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 be, that covers it for us if it covers it for you. Yeah. So I, I, I personally didn't like the vagueness myself for the first uh, reiteration, so if, Tom, if you feel that uh, the removal of the, uh, the paragraph you identify, you're comfortable, then... Yes. Okay. Yeah. As long as you guys agree. And I think... Michelle, I don't think we had anything else, right? Um, drainage, easement, oh. language. Pork chops. Oh, pork chops. This, I guess, I think they were identified a while ago with Jay, they but were. Michelle mentioned it, um, that the subdivision regs don't allow pork chop lots. And we think 19.1 certainly is, and 19.3 is pretty close. So do you have any... Uh, well, I think they're... I mean, there wasn't a definition of what qualifies as a, as a pork chop lot. We, we, we tried to follow the, the front end requirement, and, and really, we, we backed into the, to the land based on where we wanted to build the homes. And by default, we didn't we, we meet the zoning ordinance, but I, I guess the, the, the cluster seems to give you the flexibility to do more creative lots than on the standard subdivision. So you know, our focus really is we're building here and building here regardless of where our, our frontage is. And uh, so we think that that's what the, the, the cluster... And they only require 50 feet of frontage. So by default, they would all have to do something weird in order to... Um, so is that something we should ask for a waiver from the, the subdivision regulation? To, to um, at this point, we haven't asked for any, any waivers at all. Um, Mr. Chairman, I think that it is in the subdivision rates, right? The pork chop. I believe it is because I, I know that we, that, um, we encountered this a year or so ago, Oldenburg Lane. I know that that um, was an issue. We would have to determine that it's in the subdivision rather than zoning. So. Yeah, section 914, town of Rollsford does not allow 
the creation of pork chop lots in any zone. Can you explain what a pork chop lot looks like to me? Thank well, thank you. That's a good point. I mean, if we look at it, that one um, on the far right with the house from way back, yep. where it has that little stem coming off the road, and then it opens up wider, kind of resembles a, the pork chop. Um, Bob is right. The term isn't defined in our ordinance or the zoning regs, um, so I guess it's kind of one of those. You know, it's just an odd term, right? Yeah. Um, this third one in looks kind of like one, um, but it's relatively short, and I think most pork chops, I looked at the definition online, and it's just talked about a, a real long driveway, but it, it didn't say what the length of the driveway would be, and that's what I would um, So either we, we have to grant a waiver, or they have to go for the CBA, right? Um, I don't think there's only board because no. it is. It it's is, not zoning. Yeah. Okay. It right. is Sorry, it's a subdivision. So if they, applicant were to make a request um, to grant a waiver for those, just to be safe for those two, assuming you guys would be inclined to grant it, I guess. What section was it, Tom? Oh, it's section 9.14. There's general, require, yeah, general requirements for the subdivision. And, and uh, I didn't see that. I guess I did see that one point. I did read the, the one further back under lot shape and size or lot shape and size regulations. And that, and that specifically says that this is meant to, to trump uh, the zoning ordinance and maybe waive. Uh, oh, right. But we're not but, but suggesting we go to the CBA. No, but I mean, it. it, it no. Where are you? It's 11 something? 11 4 lot, lot shape and size. Uh, and then talking about the configuration a lot. Um, these regulations carry out the intent of the zoning ordinance and, and provide clarity and flexibility in the administration of requirements of the zoning ordinance. They are not meant to, to supplant the zoning ordinance and maybe waive in accordance with 13.03. Again, relative to size and shape. Yes. So I think pork chop would fall into the shape category. And, and then this, this, I think this probably further complicates that the ordinance goes on to say that oddly shaped lots cannot reasonably be interpreted to be an orderly layout of the land or ensure the proper description um, and they're not permitted. But it doesn't define oddly shaped lot either. So I, I think it's consistent with the pork chop thing. But I, I, I think it would be appropriate for the applicant to petition the board for a waiver from that provision. Okay. Um, and uh, Sue and Richard, do you have any comments on that? No, I don't know. Okay, okay. All right. yeah. And Michelle, do you have any comments on the uh, that issue? No, just a waiver request. Okay, all right. I mean, it seems to me where the applicant has worked hard to create, uh, you know, a design that uh, you found uh, appealing so far that um, that would be appropriate to as part of the application to request the waiver for that. Do we formally do that here and now, or is that? Uh, um, you can't. It has to be a public hearing, and it, that particular thing is not on the agenda, that particular item. But there are also, um, there were drainage calculations, right? That we needed to get? Um, drainage easement language. Drain, drainage easement language. Do we have that? I haven't heard it. Well, we, we're, all, we're, we're granting these two areas here easement to the town for uh, uh, they're the fallback maintenance person. You get the maintenance covered in your HOA docks. Um, would that be the spot where it would end, normally end up is in the HOA docks, or is this a separate? It would be probably separate, huh? I think, yeah. Yeah, so. Um, I guess it's something I would just have my attorney brought up, and I'm happy to do that. And probably also in the D for the parcel. Yeah. Um, I was expecting kind of a little list of this kind of fine tuning items. Hopefully, it's in addition to the approval. But um, it's the first I've heard of needing to do it, and so I'll definitely do it. I thought we covered it a little bit at the last meeting. 
Well, we, we talked about the need for drainage and drainage easement, not the language specifically. Oh, that's that's what I understood. It didn't occur to me that there should be verbiage that goes along with the sketch. Now I now I understand. So it'd be easy um, to get done. And we're still um, the right piercing went to the um, state. Right, but it hasn't been approved yet. As I recall, there's no response yet. No. We, we, we just got right here on Friday, and we can send the stuff to the state there. So they haven't, they haven't had an opportunity yet to we'll sign on. Um, the fire department has weighed in that they are okay with that at this point. They'll wait to see what the state has to say about that, but they'll be ready to supply a letter as soon as we hear back from the state. Assuming there are no complications with that. The engineering firm, though, did mention um, that it would be better to have an 8-inch main than a 6-inch main. Yeah, we, did, we, we, did, we did make that modification. So is that reflected in the plan? I didn't check that. Not, not in these plans, because you did these on Thursday. We got the memo. I got to tell you that we came to the first meeting with a 6, and Ray said 8, so we changed it to an 8. And Vern told me, no, it's the six on the street. Do not put a six on your road. So we changed it back to an eight. And as soon as we saw that report, we've now changed it back. So the six you're seeing was a, was a six and an eight already. Um, he's, he told me it needed to go back down, and I trusted his judgment. But we did see that in the So letter. you may have a conflict, because I think the planning board would agree with the engineering firm. The district may not. And so you're going to need district approval and state anyway. approval and planning approval. And I don't know if there's going to be a conflict if they're disagreeing with the size of the main. The commissioner said that the engineers would take precedence. That was, you know, his opinion to drop it back to a six. But at the end of the day, Wright Pierce ran the numbers, and they we we would take their advice as well. Okay. So they also, uh, and Tom, correct me and Michelle if I'm wrong on this. Aside from we're waiting for the state approval, the water district has to get approval, and we're waiting for that also. Yes. 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 Okay. We have our two state permits too, by the way. Yes. Yeah, subdivision approval. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we didn't see that. Okay. Is weird. It wasn't. It seems to me. Is there an issue about Tom about the? Um, ownership of the open space and yeah. whether or not yeah. um, you know the, the homeowners need to have a partial how that how the ownership of the open space is going to be reflected in the deeds in the plans uh, on the two parcels in question yes you're correct we, we do need that kind of firmed up so that they don't default to the town right right this would be each each landowner would own one seventh interest in the open space with the overriding homeowners association protecting it. With the and that's in the deed and the yes, homeowner. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't made deeds yet, but if oh, that's, oh, oh. I mean, again, I, I hoping for some sort of an approval and then I take the attorney yeah. and I, this is when you go in and you start to get the legal people. But um, if, if sample deeds um, or just him explaining how we were going to do it, how we've done it in the past. You know, um, but they would have be simple of their own lot, and then one seventh interest in those two common lots. I don't know if it was in the HOA docs or not. I'm pretty sure it's referenced in there, but that's it's referenced in a way that I don't think was really clear that it was a seventh interest. Okay. But I think that's important because if. Um, an individual homeowner has every interest in maintaining, you know, an up-to-date status with the town, with the tax bill for their individual lot, but less so with the common space. So if the common space taxes were not paid, what were to happen? There's not really anything to lean there. That's really the point. So then it becomes open, non-taxable space owned by the town. We're trying to avoid that, is the point of the conversation. So if there's a seventh interest in each of those lots, then they're getting a seventh of the lien, in which case the town is more protected to be sure that those property taxes are paid. And that was that is the way that we intended to do it, was the one seventh interest. 
Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Tom, Michelle, are there any other uh, issues that we need to discuss with? Uh, uh, yeah, I don't think so, Mr. Chairman. What's that? I don't think so, sir. I think. Um, Uh, so do um, any of the board members wish to ask any questions of the applicant or Tom or Michelle? No, I think they clarified quite a bit. Okay. All right. Um, so we have uh, members of the public here. Do any of the public, uh, members of the public want to comment? And if so, please identify your name and address for our reporting secretary. Looks like no takers. So, given uh, that there, I know, Mr. Brigham, you're very, uh, <clears throat> very uh, concerned about getting a, uh, so I guess the first issue is, um, would someone like to make a motion to suspend the public hearing at this point? So moved. All right, is there a second? Second. Okay. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. All right, the uh, ayes have it. All right. Um, it would seem to me that, given that there are some outstanding issues, I know you're very, uh, would like to move forward as quickly as possible. The biggest issue being, of course, the issue of the, the state and the district approval on the, uh, the water issue and the, uh, the issue of the main and the issue of the noticing in regard to the waiver. Um, I think it would be appropriate to continue this until the next, the next board meeting. Uh, how do you feel about that? I mean, really, I mean, our, our, our concern is, is, is just weather related. That, that from your approval, uh, he's got a 30 day appeal period. Or the, 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 he has to sit out until the, the bank will release any funds to start road construction. So at, the, at this point, we're looking at the beginning of November uh, before we can get shoved on the ground. And, and he's got 30 days to get paving down. Um, likely. Paving, you know, paving, you know, is very seasonal. We're going to have, you know, the road agent's going to have a lot to say about when paving can happen, and my guess is it's not going to be this fall by the time, you know, after the November meeting, and then 30 days. Well, that, that, that was our point. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, I, you know. <laughs> for the, year. The, the other point, just because you asked, is that the, the two, the three things that I, I see that could have easily been conditions of approval, two are water-related, and I've done... A lot. I've hired two different firms to do water tests, and I've been kind of begging and pushing my way through. I'm in a water district, and there's plenty of pressure for two different engineering firms. The recommendation on the letter and from the fire department is that it's adequate. And to have it, because I've done everything as fast as I could, and, and I hired the wrong firm not understanding, and I went to a commissioner where they were trying to sign my letter, and now the state has something from an engineer that says it's adequate. The fire department said it's adequate. The state can take up to two weeks to issue what we, we know isn't going to be. I mean, in 99.99% in sure, they're going to say, yes, that the information satisfies it. And then the, the shape of lots, I've always felt that a cluster subdivision was a way where we could get creative <coughs> fish houses together and not even have, you don't even need lots at all, but the fact that um, it never came up until now that the shape could require this waiver, it, it surprised me, but to have an approval that's contingent upon other things happen, happening isn't really an approval. It means you have your approval of your subdivision, Mike, but we need this letter from the state, and they're, they're, you know we're going to need this waiver request granted. So... If you recall, it was in Jay Stevens' first response to your first proposal that he found them to be pork chop lots. But since they require their own noticing of the public, wouldn't you find that if this board gave you conditional approval tonight, that that rather negates the public, the value of the public opinion? If it were contingent on that approval, then it doesn't mean anything unless that one happens. But I get it. That that surprised me because I wasn't expecting it. When it was just the water, I really felt like I've done everything and that the likelihood is so strong, why hold it up? But I, I get your point on on this waiver because 
So a, wa a waiver would need to be noticed? I think we would have asked for this waiver a while back, but we honestly thought that somewhere in this, Jay also said he was completely wrong in a few of the things, and I got the assumption because it stopped coming up that when he was backing off on his lot size attack, that he, that, that we were, we've all seen the shapes of the lots, that we no longer, were needed, that there was no waiver needed. I think at one point we were going to even ask, should we request a waiver? And it just didn't feel like we did. But I'm not feeling rejected. Someone asked how I, I felt, and so I just wanted to say that when issues get small, they can be made conditions of approval. A, a, a waiver is not was not expected. You know, that, that I get, I understand. I'd be disappointed, like you said, because of the when pavement plants close, that water letter that I've been chasing like nobody's business, and now this waiver that I didn't know about, and the chances of a subdivision for, you know, six or eight months, and it's not. That doesn't mean you can't necessarily I understand the area for paving gravel. first thing in the spring and, yeah. and lay water mains and other kinds no, of No, I know. It's just a disappointment. It's, yeah. it's something that that I feel I feel overall we've, we've really taken 99 out of 102 things, and these ones are coming, but they're, they're out of our control. And, and I appreciate you saying that. You know, we're, this is a, a young board. Uh, this is my first tenure as chairman. Uh, I feel a bit uh, tenuous and in uh, taking uh, steps, and I'm going to listen to the advice of uh, you know our land administ lease administrator and our consultant and our town administrator, and uh, so I'm, I'm not comfortable you know giving you putting it for a, a, uh, finalizing it tonight. So I would entertain a motion to suspend, continue. continue. You don't need, you don't need I don't need to make a motion. I don't need a motion. Okay. All right. Again, showing my lack of we expertise all, and knowledge. We are all new at this. Everybody here is 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 new at this operation. I think you'll find with Rollins hurt. We do the best we can with There's two little you know, pieces that I, I just couldn't quite get, get done. But, I, I, I don't ever recall seeing a, a waiver notice to that in a public notice. Really? really? Oh, sure. I've never seen a waiver. Yes. Well, my experience is we ask for waivers, honestly, verbally at, at boards in, in the past. They'll say you need three different waivers, and then they'll come and they'll, they'll vote on them because that's their their rule. I've never read, read a public notice that mentions a waiver. Well, I think it's perhaps maybe we don't make a commercial use, maybe. Well, um, I think waivers usually are included in the whole application, mm -hmm. and then the board votes whether to grant or deny the waiver as part of the review. I think in this particular case, maybe you're correct that it hasn't been just a standalone item, but I still think it needs public hearing. I mean, that's, that's your decision. I, I, I mean, as you mentioned, that was in Jay, Jay Stevens' comments, and, and our response was, uh, we believe these pork chop lots, and, and the comment went away again. I mean, excuse me, we believe these are cluster lots, not not, not, not pork chop lots. I thought that's what cluster lots were, was it gave you guys the flexibility of not going with the standard zoning and the standard shape and size. The, the, the whole idea is that you put the houses where they go and where they best fit. And um, again, we, we could have changed lines or we could have asked for the waiver, but I honestly didn't see it not coming up at a meeting before now. And, and not blaming him. Well, I, the, the waiver in the water mm -hmm. right, became a dramatic cost to me and not being able to get them done. And, and water wasn't fair. But, I mean, changing that around and then, you know, if you're in a water district and you meet all the pressure and, and the, the engineers and the fire department all say it's okay. Um, but I've learned a lot. Was that, Usually, I think this must happen behind the scenes in other subdivisions. I've never had to, um, I've never dealt with the state directly and, and things like that. So we'll have to come back. So can, can we just go through uh, a list for me to make sure I've, I've got everything? I've got I've got plan, plan revisions uh, that would include um, that's your two open space lots, noting that they're not a building lot. Correct. And on SP one. I've been taking off the second, the second paragraph at the top there. Right. 
and those, those are the two plan revisions I have. And then I have, we're going to request a formal waiver to the shape of, of 19-3 and 19-1. Um, we're going to revise the homeowners association to be clear about the form of ownership. I'm going to come up with easement deed language that you can send it to you. And are we looking for more proof that the lots each own one seventh, or is me saying it and clearing it up in the the, the, HOA, the HOA documents? Okay. So just for me, as far as legal goes, just the the easement language and the, and the HOA. From the HOA one seventh being more clear. And then we've got two the two approvals that, that we need to get in place. One is the water district approval and the DES water approval. I did send an email. But and copied, I think, you and, and Ray and asked, what do I do next? Do I need the state? Do I need the town in order to get the commissioner? Do I need to go to another commissioner so meeting? So, I saw that email. I don't feel like I can comment because that's really for the district to determine they how you might either. go about their business. But really, I would suggest that you um, email the commissioners and go to their next meeting. Um, I, I don't, I, I, that's the best I can suggest they certainly are aware of your request and your project so I would I would anticipate that that would be on their agenda anyway um, but they can't act outside of their meeting so it's not likely to happen outside of let's say that the state takes two weeks to send us an approval and then in the next two weeks there's not a commissioner's meeting um, I wouldn't have the ability to come back here with both of those I'm assuming the state has to approve first, and then the commissioners can. I would hope that the commissioners would wait for state approval, but I don't suppose that they really have to. You don't know when their next meeting is. Um, yeah, it is on Wednesday next week. So there's this, if they do what you hope and wait for the state approval, there's a chance that I could miss that. That you would be another two weeks out. So oh, they do it every two weeks. They're on two every two weeks, yes. I understand that. I can easily meet these conditions, you know. Do we, do we have an issue? I think we have to, um, I think you will. We need to, we're still waiting on um, invoices for No, I mean, I mean for the public Oh, for the public noticing? I'd say yes. Seven days. Yeah.
and uh, so the board's attorney Weisskiller presenting uh, Mr. Phipps, and uh, please uh, go forward. Good evening, I'm Chris Weisskill, Ralph Phipps. Can you spell um, your last name? I sure can, I'm used to it, W-Y-S-K-I-E-L. Okay, and your first name again? Chris, okay. C-H-R-I-S. That's easy. From the law firm in Dover, Weisskill, but I'll tell you if you want to spell it. Oh, really? Yeah. Good <laughs> You're good. So I'm here with Ralph um, to refresh with recollection. He was before this planning board was the last uh, spring. I forget the exact dates. Uh, he was advised, well, he was telling you then about his plans to use his property at 2 Turgeon Way. 20. 20 Turgeon Way. 20 Turgeon Way, I'm sorry. I just look at that, so I wouldn't screw up when I screwed up. To build a house on it and uh, combine storage structure and all. When it was before the planning board, um, you were then advised that it appeared to exist as a legally non conforming lot for which zoning relief would need to be applied for. Ralph came to see me saying I need a variance, and I couldn't figure out exactly why. Um, and I was very confused, suggesting he apply for a variance. Um, he had his landscaping business there for some 10 years. Um, I did believe or interpret that to be a legally conforming agricultural use for the zone. I was familiar with this property because in um, 2017 I assisted him in challenging the town's assessment of the land use change tax on his property uh, because the town took the position that some of the disturbed areas on his land that he was using for his uh, landscaping uh, business diminished his overall use of the size of his lot so that he had less than 10 acres qualifying it for current use. Challenged that and wrote some letters, lots of exhibits and stuff, and the town disagreed and did not challenge. Um, so I interpreted that, and in correspondence I've shared with Tom, I don't know, Tom, if you shared everything that we've exchanged in your letter, but I have copies to share today. Um, I don't know if all board members are here. To get over that, so I'm here for two reasons as a preliminary council. To get over the hurdle um, of Ralph's need to go anywhere else besides this board to seek the development approvals for what he wants to do. I think he's properly here for site plan review only in for to get over this confusion about does he have legal status to do that or um, or should he proceed that way in a preliminary consult rather than a public hearing and have a public take on tangent down the road? Let me explain that. Secondly, I wanted to, again, uh, members may be different, I, I, yeah, thank you, <laughs> thank you <John. laughs> to generally go over what the plan is, because he's not full boat invested with an engineer uh, who's ready to do the work. We do intend to file an application with a written request for various waivers, I'm aware of your site review regulations that require that to be in writing and the criteria that needs to be addressed and my guess is Adam Fogg who will be his engineer will have me write something addressing all those points uh, to do that and I understand that has to be granted at a public hearing but, but I wanted to you know test the winds of this board to see um, if you react reasonably or it will be as telling if you act unreasonably to you know what I would hope and recommend uh, would be a reasonable requested waiver if you flat out say, no, nah, we're not going to be interested in that. May as well get Adam working on, on those type of things. So I have a marked up section of the criteria for site plan. I want to sort of go over those and, and weigh those those um, issues. So it's best, I think, to lay out a plan, show you what we want to do, show the construction plans, you know, what's going on. And, in terms of existing conditions and what use is actually going on on the site now, um, I was browsing through my work when we challenged the land use change tax assessment and realized I had Google Maps photograph and was trying to show the town what its use is. And that's pictures worth a thousand words. I have it so I can refer. So, do we need to address? I mean, uh, I have prepared to address the, the, the site plan, I mean, the, the uh, zoning issue. Tom, if you don't mind, Chris, I'm going to go to Tom and say, Tom, what's your. Uh, Advice on that issue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think part of the confusion came is when um, Ralph petitioned the planning board initially. Um, I think they may have been given inaccurate advice about the 
not a conformity of the particular use. But I also think that was rendered moot by a comment made by the select board in the resolution of the uh, appeal. Um, the select board wrote that the decision that they had that he he had to pay the tax, but that was that was the only thing reflected in the decision. It didn't affect anything else, and there was a I should have brought the word. I got it. Oh, you can read this was because yeah. yeah. you asked me before I sent you copy. This um and you can include this packet, of course. Where I'll sure. I have but, lots of copies. Oh. Of the uh, this is from the chair of the select board at the time on December seventeenth, December eighteenth. 2017, that the select board reviewed Avatar's recommendation in the meeting and accepted the recommendation that the land in question is no longer conforms to the requirements of current use. We want to be clear that this relates solely to the issue of current use. The land usage on this property otherwise conforms to the town's zoning regulation. So, whoever has an opinion or not of it, it's not a conformity. I, I think this renders it moot. And in my opinion, that because of its, it is development of a non-residential tract, the site review is the only requirement, um, the only re approval required for uh, for this type of application. Okay, I, I put a little bit of a spin on that, Tom. If, if I may, just go oh, right ahead. I'm to say the property is zoned residential, it's cultural. Um, there's nothing in your zoning ordinance that I surveyed that precludes two uses on the site, so both are allowed. So you know. My position would well, be he's got this agricultural use, it's commercial use, it's existing. Um, it's going to change because the house he wants to build, he's going to live on the second floor. On the first floor, he's going to store equipment and everything and neaten up the whole site uh, of equipment and, and other things that he uses in his work, in his crew's work, that are now stored in like trailers. Got it? You know? Things but that were going back in the truck or something, you dump them there and stuff like that. So those will be removed, the storage will be internal in the structure and stuff. So that's a change of an existing commercial use that I think appropriately is before site review. And then he wants to do a residence that's allowed too. So I mean, it's, it's a twofer to put that on the plan, come before and have it approved that way. So, you know, I was scratching my head during the course of some going with the parents. I don't think so, a special exception, I don't think so. Um, and I corresponded with Tom. We spoke by phone. I have copies of my email exchange. You know, basically, I was telling Tom in emails <coughs> in this select use letter he just referred to, um, quoting from it, saying the select board has got the authority to enforce uh, zoning non-compliance issues. It didn't. It wrote this. Certainly, it had the purview in challenging the land use change tax. Say, hey, what, what you're doing. You shouldn't be doing it all. It didn't do that. It took the tax. So then I'm thinking, of course, this summer, go to the ZBA, do I have to start ginning up the municipal stop argument, stuff like that, and everything. And there was a change in the guard here. I spoke with Caroline, and I spoke with Tom, and I sought from him a letter to just clarify his opinion as a code enforcement officer interpreting the zoning ordinance that we don't need zoning relief, we come here. He agreed. I have his letter, too, who says that, and Tom references the select board's letter that had that one. That sentence also. So I think we come here only. And I wanted to sort of get that out of the way preliminarily. So I have copies, you know, to leave for you of this stuff. Sure, if you want to leave a copy for the our, our records, I think that um, Tom has explained the issue to me and I'm, I'm, I'm happy with his explanation. I don't think the board um, disagrees with uh, your intended course of action, Chris. Good. Yes, and I'm very sorry. Michelle, would you please, uh, uh, you have, you have any, like to put some input in on uh, what's being said? Uh, not right now. Okay. I mean, this I this is the I first she's heard of it. Yes, yeah, okay. this is the first that I've heard of it. So, okay. Uh, I'm going to differ to Tom. <laughs> okay. But Sue and Richard, is this making sense? Yeah. 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 I have extra copies of you know, board numbers. Yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. We just have to throw them away. So, wherever it wants, throw them away. So, did you give them? No. They're on the bunch, yeah. So, is it the same as that? So, I just wrote it. You still don't need one. I don't. You're all set. So, so there's no misunderstanding. Um, we will all get the full set of plans and we'll go through the 
through the normal process. The only idea tonight was to make sure that the board agreed um, with that decision. So, Michelle will get hers. I mean, we'll all do our due diligence, et cetera, on the set of plans that comes up. Which aren't done. So, I mean, so let's, like, what normally be a preliminary um, meeting, pre meeting uh, agenda. Let's review what Ralph's going to do. Takes a lot. Is this how I can yell? It's 11.8 acre uh, lot. It's part of a residential subdivision that was approved. I don't know, what was that done? 2007. Um, Church and Way. And it's in a cul de sac, and Ralph's got a driveway that comes in and loops around here. And probably the best way, as I said, to show how he's now using the property is to share a Google Maps. I'll give you a few to just pass it down. The print that I did at the time of the uh, <coughs> age tax issue we talked about. You know, Rob says, yeah, it's just basically about the same thing. So if I overlay and sort of uh, keep this the same way, that's about right, Ralph. Right. So the road comes in and cul de sac. The road comes in and it's all cul de sac that way. And Ralph's driveway comes in and serpentines in. And he's got this area cleared. And you can see the white squares. Those are the trailer things that he has. He's got a clear gravel area that, you know, his, and sometimes his crew comes in, they park there for the day and take trucks out to do the landscaping business. Um, and he's got other storage stuff. He's got stuff just left outside storage, you know, you drop uh, plows are just stored there when you're not plowing in the, when you're doing the summer stuff in the winter, that stuff's there. You got mowers and you can elaborate. But then if you come through this, this treat area and you can see all these rows of material, that was the, um, this stuff here, these, these rows. Those are materials, um, cut things that comes back to the site dumps there, and they, they till them over time. And, you know, as they move from pile to pile, they become mulch that they then take off site and use. And, and, you know, not to belabor the point, the land change tax issue was, um, you know, that's part of agricultural use and doesn't probably shouldn't be exempted. I think the town's position, well, no, that's part of your commercial type use, which is, it says it's not illegal, but it, it's disqualifying you from the 10 acre minimums for language change tax. Okay, we'll do that. So on this site, you know, none of that stuff out in the fields is changing, right, Rob? No. No. All right, so we're not expanding the use or anything like that. But he wants to put the house, he wants to clean up this area that's exposed in the gravel and the trailer sites and all that. Uh, you, you are, you're going to cut some, a few more trees in this area, Rob? Yes. So the house will be located back. So what Adam Vark has already done is, do you have the approval for septic already? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we did a, a septic plan approval. I don't know if I can sort of read this, this thing too. Um, north. North is this way. Okay, so north, I've got my north arrow sort of the same way. And the shed that's shown on this plan is an existing structure, which is the shed right here that I put in yellow. So the well is going to be in the front area, um, and he wants to build a house. It's all have construction plans to show you the elevations and, and, and footprint and stuff. Um, and a septic behind it. So that's generally in this area. And again, if you, if you look at the overlay, he's using this existing gravel area to minimize the cutting and stuff like that. So he wants to build. Yes. Ralph, I'm going to defer to you to say, you know, these elevations, where's the front? I mean, is it, is it, is it right here? The Whatever. front is basically just looking out south, due south, in front of the, where, and the house will be where these two rect white rectangles are. Mm -hmm. yeah. They'll be gone. Okay. And uh, the septic system will be out back. We have to remove a couple more trees, uh, not a lot. But that'll be it. That's the only change. And the house is going right here? The house is going right with those white ones. Right, right here. Yeah. So you've got to clear the tree area behind that to create septic, a septic field. The uh, septic system is going to go right behind it. Okay. It is mostly cleared, but there's a couple of big trees that would, uh, just for future issues. So these plans, you know, you've got a. Um, We've got a floor plan, 
you know, the, the, the ground floor space is probably going to be used for your landscaping business. You need to climb upstairs. This is going to be to an apartment store. Yeah, well, actually, this, this part of the building is, is an apartment. So then I'm just going to bed. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Our, you know, his landscaping thing does ground side. He's got an apartment, and you go upstairs, and there's like a loft area. Bedroom yeah, space use here. The other elevation changes. Um, and actually, the roof, there's going to be very little elevation change. It's basically the grade uh, that exists now is going to stay the same. Uh, it was a lower behind where the house where the house is going. There was a, an area that was a little bit lower than the existing ground. Um, I had filled in his gravel, and I didn't fill. And that's where the septic system's going and worked out in our, <laughs> in that, to better ours, a lot less digging. So, so the you know, commercial or agricultural use change that's occurring is to internalize a lot of storage, neaten up the parking, get rid of the, the trailers and stuff are going away, right? Yes. Yeah. So in terms of size, the commercial, that's not expanding. The back fields and things aren't expanding. I'm saying this all as a preface to my wanting to waltz into the request for waivers that I would seek be done in writing part of the application. Like in my buddy block, this section, uh, Article 4 of 1A, of your regs, I mean, your criteria that I'll, I'll probably be addressing is that you know, you, you, you're not supposed to grant, shall not grant the waiver, it says, unless you find, based on the evidence, will prevent that granting the waiver will not be detrimental to the public health, safety, general welfare. Uh, granting the waiver shall not be opinion of board and be injurious to other parties. Granting the waiver will not have the effect of nullifying the intended purpose of your zoning chapter and the site review chapter regulations. Um, that strict compliance would cause undue hardship to the applicants solely because of the unique physical characteristics of the site. Uh, and that the board determines that granting the waiver would result in substantial benefit to the public. You know, so as I cover the areas that I'm going to focus and saying I think we'd be requesting a waiver from, you know, I'm not going to address all these points, but, you know, I think the public is generally benefited by the cleaning up of the site and getting rid of the metal storage trailers, providing adequate inside storage for his business, you know, uh, properly uh, providing, you know, um, someone to live there too to keep watch over all that stuff. There'll be a septic there, so you're cruising, you know, you're going to have, you have bathroom facilities on the we commercial have a port side. Body. Now, yeah. but I mean, I, on those plans, you've got a It'll business be a, side like and a crew bathroom in the, in the garage part. Okay, yeah. yeah, as well as your residential. Yes. Okay. It was designed as a three-bedroom home, but it's only going to be two bedrooms. We figured that that three-third bedroom would cover for the for the house in this job. You know, so in terms of it not being detrimental, public health, safety, whatever. I mean, the design of this site, site the approval of basically putting a structure, which could be a large house, is going to be a small residential area, and, and the component to coming up with business use is appropriate residential use, which is appropriate zone for the matter. Cleaning up the site's good. So, you know, it, I don't think it's going to injure anybody. It's not going to nullify the intent of your, your ordinance by granting the waivers I think we're going to request. Um, what we're looking for generally the waivers is, you know, they're very specific as to the uh, engineering criteria that's going to be addressed for the whole site. This is a, almost a 12-acre site. Uh, so, for example, you know, contours and, and all that stuff. Um, this use is pre-existing, it's been existing for 10 years, and we're not touching it. The area we're touching has been touched, it's going to be touched a little bit more. Contours are shown for the septic, had to be for the um, septic approval from the state. You know, so let me just run down your Article 3 design standards, but to, to make the point, let me say, we don't understand. You know, we'd like to avoid the cost, frankly, of showing the topography of the 12 <coughs> site, where most of it's not going to be effective. You know, the driveway's not changing, the parking area's not going to change, because the gravel area in front of the house is not going to be enlarged. That accommodates the trucks that will be there now, and the trucks leave, and the cars, you know, the people that kind of work, park there. It's, it's just an even swap, sort of. 
a lot of the equipment's going to be stored inside now. Some of the bigger stuff is going to be outside, right? Mowers and tractors and whatever. They are now not changing. <clears throat> so, you know, for existing site conditions, um, you know, like, like there could be a sheet of existing conditions, like to show that generally, or refer to a, a picture, you know, and not having to plot with certainty, you know, where, where trailers that are going to be removed anyways are going to be. Um, <clears throat> but I think most of these things uh, can be addressed. Um, we'd like to seek a waiver to avoid having a HISS, a high intensity soil, soil survey for the entire site or portion determined by the board. Um, septic approval, I think, protects those features of the earth that the NHGS approval for septic design seeks to protect and doing further hiss is, uh, I would assert, unnecessary for existing landscaping slash um, agriculture use that's been existing for 10 years in which the slot board's letter and Tom say, you know, okay, yes. I just if, you, if I may. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to address your point, though. Sure. While there was a letter from the select board yep. acknowledging that, or, or stating, that there was no zoning issue, it doesn't seem as though, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Phipps, that the business ever went before planning for site review. So while the use itself, I think the board so far, or the t you know, is acquiesced will be acceptable for purposes of, you know, not needing to go through zoning and adhere to planning. Um, the business use itself, in its footprint and its design and layout, and you know, the use of that property, like I don't think ever went through planning. So, you know, probably ought to in this process. So. You know, I don't disagree with your statement. The issue is, to what degree of process should Ralph be submitted to? For, for example, Carolyn, if, if, if um, you say, well, let's with certainty show me where every um, row of these um, mulch in the process of being built or, or done, right. so that it's going to become the planning board, so then your review process can say, you can't do that anymore. I mean, then you're going to get me getting back up and saying, no, no, that opportunity should have been raised two well, years ago in that process. I don't think you know. Well, I, I, I get your point. You know, the board at the time, the select board at the time was, was addressing the current use issue Agreed. and was specifically not addressing a zoning issue. Agreed. But if something's coming before planning, then I think it would be due diligence of this board to address everything within its purview. So it's not come before this board, but if it's going to come through this board, it's just an open question, really, I guess, for our... So, so, so my point is, else. I understand that. I don't disagree with you. I don't know to what extent. I mean, that I think I would ask Tom Clark and Michelle about. Yeah, so before he answers, if I can have my say, I don't disagree. You know, I, I don't disagree with your assertion that the planning board uh, in ruling on a land use change tax, it wasn't making definitive this zoning one. determination. Yes. That's why I conversed and corresponded with your code enforcement officer, who at the threshold level is the party responsible to make a zoning interpretation. And that's why I requested his letter, which is given me, to say, you're not to go to the ZBA or whatever, this is a use that can right. continue. Let's put on the shelf or beg for the moment whether it's Agricultural legal or simply an issue right, the town right. doesn't want and that's to see the point. municipal estoppel to stop or change. But if I submit myself and open myself up to the planning board process to full purview, so Ralph's got to show everything with the engineering detail and cost that this site review writer says, What are you going to do? Tell him that he can't do something he's been doing for 10 years? Because then his lawyer's going to say, No, they can't do that to you. So if you can't, that can't be done to you, I'm saying, Why does he have to? go through the expense of showing all that engineering data for the whole 12 years. I'm not necessarily disagreeing with you. I just think it's a con conversation that this board has to acknowledge and have to come itself to that determination, if it will. I, I think you're both right, but um, if we were to imagine for a moment that this was a vacant lot, and we're, out, <coughs> we're proposing this particular use with all the existing features, 
you would you would have to come before the board with all of them on the plan. If it was not previously used for any of these vacant lot? Yes. Three. So I think what Caroline is saying is that you know, the Google thing is good, but maybe a little higher level of detail um, just to be sure that it complies with the site review rights, not just the building that Ralph is building uh, or the septic, but but frankly, I'm not sure. Uh, I think there's a high, like I think there's a happy medium yes. between yes. the full extensive detail and the he's just building a house. You know, like is there adequate parking for all the employees? I think this board has some responsibility to address some basic needs and uses of that function to make sure that it's safe and appropriate. Not that to say that he would be you know, have to discontinue the use or limit certain areas necessarily, but that certain minimum standards are getting evaluated. So I don't disagree with that. And I think Adam can certainly depict, you know, dimension on the area. This area that's cleared and the additional area that has to be cleared. You know, it's, it's the topos are shown on this plan already to that extent. But I'm, I don't think, you know, it's reasonable to require the whole site, the topos for the whole site to be done, or hits to be done for the high intensity soil survey to be done for the whole site. Because if, if, I, if it were a vacant lot, you know, never touch, and he's going to send and do all this stuff, I think you have as a plan for you a shot to say, all right, let's see if you can do it. He's doing it. He's done it for 10 years. And if you take the step to say, well, now we're going to pull you back and say you've got to do less, just because he submits himself to planning, I'll contest that and say he doesn't. If we have to do that, I'm just saying, don't make him spend the money to do you know, all the engineering for the whole thing. His lighting is probably going to be just on the structure. So Adam can show, you know, your site says, what kind of light is it going to have? What kind of lumen is it? What is it going to be pointing? And he can show that stuff. But do we have to do it? An entire separate lighting plan, like if you have a commercial site, you know, with all the lumens and all those little dot lines and all the little data and stuff like that. I think that if he's not doing that, so I think that would be excessive. He can show, and, and you know, when he comes in, the presentation will say so many employees are coming, so many cars come, and all that stuff. And Adam's plan should certainly show they're not parking on top of each other, you know, and that there's enough room. I, I don't disagree with that. But, um, you know, stormwater drainage study and all that stuff. I'm going to say, I don't think that's necessary because the only extent of new development really is in the nature of the house and the septic that's allowed for the zone. You wouldn't have that done for residential. I mean, there's two uses here, you know. Um, certainly, you don't want to open myself up and say, well, you've got to prove to me that the drainage for the back portion of the lot he's been using for the past 10 years is done. And, you know, to get back to your question about I came to the town after I bought this land and said, what do I need to do? I, okay, so I'm not, I, I don't told, know uh, that, you know, so yeah, I asked I, you I, for that, yeah. you know. I was told nothing. I mean, when I was putting the driveway in, they said, sure, hey, go ahead and do it. That's what I was told, and I didn't. Um, I, I wasn't told I had to come to front of the planning board to open a landscape business or anything. Do I dare ask who told you that? <laughs> I'd rather not say, but uh, we all know who she is. Um, and, I mean, it was different back then, I understand, but... So, so what about, what about, excuse me, Chris, what about if um, <clears throat> the planning board were to appoint a subcommittee, if Caroline, Michelle, and myself, we could meet with Ralph and Chris, go through this stuff, because I, I see what he's saying. I mean, that the, the most piles, yeah, the yeah. most piles, I mean, that's where they are, and that's where they're going to stay. So maybe to pick them, you know, in a, in a locust plan. Um, be more specific with the development site, septic, but then the subcommittee could make a determination as to what needs to be on the plan. Because I understand his concern, you know, surveying a 12-acre lot for, you know, Adam's going to, Adam's going to, like, Use this survey and superimpose oh. this stuff oh, on yeah. it. So, I mean, so, so it's not like we're not going to show general yeah. locations and things. But I, and, but I was searching, trying to test the waters for that happy meeting too, Karen. And say no, you're not going to let them do a napkin thing, you know. But um, so here's the conversation.
conversation I had with Adam. You started the plan, but what do I got to do? And I said, well, let me do a preliminary consult and try to see. You know, I understand nothing you say is binding because it's got to be a public hearing. But we're going to come in requesting specific things. I didn't want to have this conversation from the get-go when you saying you want to find a happy medium. We're getting somewhere. I still want to, you know, travel and not keep you too late. Some of the other biggies that are very expensive and detailing that Adam's saying, you know, God, Ralph's going to have to open his checkbook for all this stuff. And I'm thinking, why? Most of this is a priest to use that it's been here for a decade. We're not touching. We're touching this area. Let's focus on that and present and prove to you that that area is adequate for what he's doing. He's going to have parking and storage and stuff like that. And you can show that probably just by dimensioning. You know? So, um, I personally like to do the other subcommittee. I'd like to ask two questions, though, that I've been, uh, wanted to ask. One is, uh, Chris, you in your presentation before, you, uh, earlier tonight, you referenced the word apartment which I tend to look, think of as a commercial enterprise. I don't think you're suggesting that... Okay, second it's thing... Second it's thing is, house. All right. it's, uh, yeah. Second thing is that occurred to me as I'm listening, and, and, and Tom, you can tell me if this is something to be worried about or not. So we're talking about a, 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 use of, a business use that really wasn't approved according to the correct process. Let's say that three years from now, Mr. Phipps says, I want to expand. The, my business. Do we have to address the scope of the current business, or do we not have to worry about that? I think, um, Mr. Chairman, it would depend on the nature of the expansion. If it's within the 12 acres, I think it's entirely under the purview of the planning board. I think if you were to acquire additional acreage, then we come back to the question of the use and whether or not it should be expanded or could be expanded. But um, I think if it's within the boundaries of the 12 acres, it's, we're not expanding the use. We may be improving it or enhancing it Okay. Um, this building. But I don't, and, I don't, and the reason I ask that question is I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm inclined to grant the kind of waivers that, that be in favor of granting the kind of waivers that Chris is asking for. But if, in terms of the specificity of this, yeah. not drawn on a napkin, but not, right. uh, you know, these expensive things, do we need to consider that yeah, for I measuring think. an expansion in the future? I think if, if Mr. Phipps were to come back after this, and say, now I want to do this, clearly it would fall into the site review ranks. So you, you would have to come back. Okay. Do you have any comment on that, Michelle? Um, I'm just guessing that there's going to be quite a few waiver requests. Yes. Um, <laughs> I got a lot of work to do. Between residential and commercial uses, um, I, don't, I haven't looked at the site plan, but um, I'm just guessing that. We don't have a site plan. plan. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 So um, I guess that's what you need to flesh out. Right. So, you know, lighting. I mean, I think he's going to show certain lighting and stuff on the house. He's not going to have lamp poles and stuff like that. I mean, you've got, uh, you know, I could go through this and, um, you know, all commercial driveways should be paved with bituminous concrete. We don't want to tar anything out there, right? You know, no, and, and I think that would be kind of <coughs> what you prefer. Um, and then we get into, what is it commercial? Is it just agriculture? Is it, you know, I mean, I don't, but I mean, I don't want to set a trap for myself in my application saying I haven't specifically cited a permit. So it's going to be a bit of a laundry mess. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you're having subcommittees, I can say, I got to do this so we try not to overlook something, you know, that, that might be good as we unleash Adam to do what's reasonable and not crazy. Um, storm drainage. I mean, I, you know, I'm really thinking, it, the site is what it is. It's sort of a pancake full of gravel in the area where it's developing. I'm thinking, I really would seek a waiver for that. Otherwise, you, you know, uh, you're going to have to accommodate, um, you know, two, ten, twenty-five, and hundred-year storm events and stuff. Say, you know, you know, I think that's a reasonable request to seek a waiver for, for limiting this in this area. Um, and a, a specific landscaping plan. I think it'll show the general, you know, tree coverage in, as a general area. But it, it, the site is so huge, we're out in the area. It's it's buffered in its natural space. <coughs> so I don't want to come up with a landscaping plan and hire, hire an arborist or something. I, I, I would think that would be something that, you know, 
you kind of enhance this. Yeah, existing yeah I can find a way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Can we, we take some photographs, too, and, and sort of memorialize if the chairman's concern is, I get your point, John. It's, it's like, you know, because there's like small degrees of expansion where there's a body of case law and says you got some right. But I mean, you guys have, I mean, if you kind of throw up another structure, that's site plan stuff again. I get that. So without doing a lot of engineering expense, you know, creatively, we could just say, here's a picture of existing use of the things and say, so, so from an enforcement perspective, you got something in a file to go out. You know, if suddenly the whole rows yields, you know, Ralph, what you, you know, what's up with that? You know, you, you got a, sort of a benchmark. But um, frankly, he's looking not to create a huge engineering bill, you know? Um, those are the big ones. So do we need to um, have a formal motion in terms of, putting a, of uh, appointing a subcommittee, or? I don't really think so. I mean, it's just a preliminary yeah. meeting anyway, and I, okay. I think it's at the board's pleasure that, okay, you know, sure. that we can just, hmm. I think a lot of things will be resolved. Yeah. Be easily. So who would be my point person? You. All right. We'll organize it and figure it out. <laughs> Thank you. That way we can give Adam some clear direction. Try to make the board happy. Maybe even the town administrator. <laughs> and uh, get there, you know, without, without, I think that's a reasonable thing to do. Okay. Great. Thank you for both here. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have anything else on the agenda? Minutes. Um, can I just take a moment? <laughs> you approved a, plan, a boundary line adjustment plan in September for Norman Wanda Gagnon? Yes, and there was a question about that by the tax collector who is the one who files plans on behalf of this body. I don't know if you, you, they were signed by plans? Mr. Hinsman, um, the, plans uh, not, not plans. Okay. So, so anyways, I mean, when Norway planned with Joel Reynolds, when, uh, he, Joel called me up, I'm doing the deep work for the Gagnon, so they do a boundary swap, it's actually become a swap, before it was just a big, it was three quarters of an acre or something to the rear going from Norm's aunt to him uh, and his wife size of the parcel. When Roy Plains went out to set the pins for the line, they found a fence was encroaching. Let me open this up. Do you mind if I knock off five minutes of the two burgers? No, no. You're off my clock. I'm off. <laughs> That's what I was worried about. Oh, I know you were. <laughs> um, so this chunk, you know, went from this lot to this and expands here. Oh, right. Chris, do the deeds, right? Uh, when Norway Plains went to set these two pens to establish new lines, they found that Maureen's back fence crosses, you know, what became the new precisely located common boundary line. And he said, I would rather not uh, move the fence. So Joel said, why can't you shoot a different line? So we got the plan, we got these two lines on top of each other. We said, Joel, what have you done? So he embellished the plan with these two enlargements. What they prefer to do is just get 91 square feet of this property in here. So that it comes over there. And it, it's not a crazy, stupid jog line. It's just a new common boundary line is set on the same course that moves 91 feet over this way. So, um, so I have draft deeds because Joel was under the impression that he wanted to see some draft deeds to accomplish this before a plan was signed off. So I have a deed for to this and this to this, but it's just a little sliver in this plan to review. So Joel said he spoke with you, not to put you on our under his bus, <laughs> uh, Michelle. And, you know, it's, a, it's sort of it's sort of weird, but you haven't seen the thing. So I, I said, well, we're making progress. I'm not ready to um, execute any deeds because this property is in trust ownership. And I think that's the thing. And I think Michael, her son, is a successor trustee, but I don't know. And, you know, before he signs a deed, I have to satisfy myself that he's got the authority to sign a deed. He's showing a trust certificate of trust and stuff. We'll but my there. point was that I don't believe it's been filed because of the trust ownership, who's the right signature on the 
application, something like that. But oh, I would so the application may have to be amended as well? Um, not that the application necessarily, I, I would have you call the tax collector, I will. you know, because she could tell you more precisely, like she wasn't, I, I think she needs the trust documents to prove that whoever is signing is the person who really owns. So do I, did yeah. have a deed, yeah. Yeah, exactly, you can record a deed without knowing that, so, so we'll figure that out, but I thought, I was under the impression from Sean that you needed draft deed copies too, so I have those, you can leave them with you, you, or you, whoever, if you want, if you don't, or the revised plan. Joel was on the impression it's approved enough, you don't need to come back to this, this thing. I don't know. I don't need to hear this. But I'm making progress. Thank you for indulging the two friends. We all set? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Good to go. I've actually got a couple of copies I'll need to, okay? Please they go to different places. So I'm, I'm that must need to be signed off on again. Whatever was handed in for paperwork is probably not accurate with acreage, if ever so slightly. Yeah, the plan that was approved is different than the one you're suggesting. Yep, that's my understanding. Because you got these little circles and the little yeah. bump out. Yeah. So I, you know, they have to come before the board again. I think so. I mean, it's, it hasn't been approved. It's been changed. I'm not gonna argue with you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to not come before you, but I don't know. <laughs> I yeah. I. Uh, does that mean you notice that? Where's the Meyer? Where's the Meyer lot line adjustment? It's mine. Wasn't it? Line line adjustment. Because the other alternatives leave it there, do the deeds differently, well, the write the deeds with the fence, and the fence will move eventually. I mean, it doesn't have to be fixed. So, so I think the applicant could be at a fork in the road and have an option. Say, no, do something pursuant to the approved plan. And, yeah. You know, the fence, as an encumbrance, can be forgiven by an easement from Norman Wanda to the party giving a chunk of land to say, you know, until, until you well, place the fence, leave it there with this easement right. And well, that's not in the purview of the planning board and it satisfies title. That would certainly be easier. Yeah. I can take that message back. And, and, not be and less expensive if it doesn't require, like, time and noticing and... Well, well I'm thinking of it because minor lot line adjustment and it's a minor amendment to that. Yeah, it could come back to the planning board under old business, which wouldn't have to be noticed. And we're just moving the line. The only thing is that the public hearing was closed. It wasn't suspended, it was closed. So you would have to re-notice to take public comment. That's not correct. I, I get it. Why don't I present the option and see what see they want to do? Because I was told differently, but I get it. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. 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 Thank do we need a motion to be separate for each one, or can we do a motion for both? I think you need one for both. Okay. All right. So. Take a look at the acceptance. All right. Is there a second? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? That's great. Good. 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 So the next would be uh, an entertain a motion to. Uh, oh, hold on one second. Oh, is there any uh, correspondence? Oh, okay. Good, good question. question. No, there's not. <laughs> um, I am not going to be here uh, for the next scheduled meeting. I'm in San Francisco, so. Let's change um, plans. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, I'm going to be in Napa, so no, oh, I'm not changing my plans. <laughs> um, so, um, although it's irregular to say so, I would. Maybe it's not a regular to say so. I'm wondering if the planning board would entertain moving the minute, the, the meeting. The date? Um, just so that we can have consistency. I think that'd be an excellent, that's an excellent idea. Projects. You're going to be back in a week? I'll be back the 8th, so you, you, could have a, you could have your meeting just a week later on the 12th, and I'll be here. And actually, you know, it might even help out the other applicant, the first applicant, right, in terms of the... Getting stuff in order. Oh, yeah. yeah so I... All right, so... Um, 
do we have to have, have to do a formal motion about that, or can we yes. just say we do? Yep. Okay, so just, um, the motion would be that the date would be. Forgive me for asking. November eighth. Uh, November twelfth. Twelfth. Is that what you said? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, does someone want first? Don't make a motion to. I think it's Trevor. I can't make. Well, I'll make yeah, a motion. Um, well, um. Oh. Tuesday. Oh, excuse me. Are you good? Sure. Well, no, hold on. Before you're saying that uh, reluctantly, I mean, do we have to, is it the day of the week that's the problem or the week itself? Um, the day of the week. I'm on the planning board in Dover, and that's the Dover planning board. Okay. So is there is there a reason why we can't have the meeting on a Wednesday as opposed to a Tuesday? We could totally do that. So why not why not do that? Um, uh, hold the phone before we do that. What day? Um, what, what what Wednesday is that? That's the thirteenth. Thirteenth. That's the second Wednesday. It's this that meeting. It's the fourteenth. That uh, board meeting. Know us? No, no, no. I know what the conflict is on Wednesday. Just okay, so there's a budget committee on the November Bu 13th. Budget committee. So that means we can. Um, okay. So that's the 13th. Oh, because you know what? Um. So like going we're back. A meeting on Monday. Um. Or is that their off week? Well, it's Veterans Day. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so alternatively, Tom, how would you feel about relinquishing your spot to Michelle and are you available for the 12th? That works for me. Yeah. Me. That's fine. Oh. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So just Why before we do that, before we do that, no offense to Michelle, <laughs> I'd like to have the benefit of both of you uh, when that first part come back. Can we do the 14th? We can't do the 14th. Is that right? Um. There's like for budget committee thing. No, the 14th. What was that date? Um, October 17th. Oh, yeah. So November 14th is fine. So I, I would prefer to have the combined Thursday, November experience 14th. and knowledge of both Michelle and Tom. So I would have it suggest that we do it on November 14th, the Thursday at 7. Um, okay. Okay, sure. Great, great. Okay, yep, that's fine with me. We'll sit up for the team. Thank you for the accommodation. Thursday the 14th. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, could you send out an email to the whole board so yeah. that those who are not here know yeah, that? Absolutely. Um, so, does someone want to first that motion? What's that? I will, uh, I will move that we move the, um, the next meeting to um, November 14th. Is that okay. Right? Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Aye. The ayes have it. Could you also let the people who are here tonight, the applicants, um, know yeah. as well? Mm -hmm. That's right. Thank you. Okay. All right. So all these we, we have to post it too because that hearing is still open. Yes. It's still ongoing. So I'll do a notice too. Okay. Great. Fantastic. So, motion Anybody first? Yeah. Want to make a motion to adjourn? All right, I'll say All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Great. Thank you very much, everyone, for your patience.